Hey, that was that was cheesy. It's Marco. Hi, uh, this is Joe. And uh, today we're going to be doing another discussion video for you. This time on the origins and formation of the world government. Yep. And we start off with a Jawa Hib original theory. Yep. About the uh, about the formation of the world government, if you would care to explain. Yes, I would. Um, so this episode is all about the big WJ, and mm -hmm. it's our second episode. And we're going to be looking at the origins, purpose in what was it? Origins, purpose, and um, and the power. The, yes, the power, the extent of their power of the world government. So my theory basically covers two of those, and that's the origin and purpose. So in short, uh, my theory is that everything that the government does and has done and will do will be in the interest of protecting a secret. Yeah. So to some, it's fairly obvious that it does have a secret that it's desperately willing to protect. But my theory takes that a step further and says that everything that they have done, they've taken over the world, they have total control of pretty much the entire system of trade, of, uh, ec of what's the word, economics, all, of, all around the world, controls everything just to protect this secret. Not because they're power hungry, not because they lack control, not because they're protecting a way of life, but because they're so scared of this secret that they have taken utter dominion and have completely uh, crafted a whole system of military called the Navy, which is undoubtedly the largest military force in the world, just to protect the secret. Uh, there's a lot of embellishment in the theory about uh, it's more of a recount as to the, the the order of events and the formation of yeah. the nobles, but that'll all be in the description in the link. There'll be a link in the description to that theory. Um, so that's the core of it, and that is exactly why I believe that the government is doing that's its purpose, and I believe that it formed at the end of Void Century yeah. for the sake of protecting that theory, that secret. Yeah, no, I I totally agree with what you wrote. Um, I mean, some didn't. Uh, if you click the link, you'll find out. But uh, yeah, um, I mean, it was stated in I think it was Robin's flashback uh, when Clover's talking to the Gorosei that the world government did appear at the end of the Void Century, and that coincidentally, that entire century, there's no there's no historical record, so. There's, def there's definitely foul play there um, with regards to keeping keeping the events a secret. Um, one of one of the questions I have for you, because one of the things you mention is the Gorase, and uh, we, we talked about this a little bit before. Do you think they know the secret that they're trying to protect, or do they just know that there's a secret to be protected? And um, yep, um, the the basis of the theory doesn't rely on an answer to that question. So maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I'm thinking evidence over the last um, the last hundred or so chapters, and this is actually a fairly old theory. I wrote this up a long time ago. Um, the uh, evidence is starting to point that it's an object, like an actual physical thing. So if it is a physical thing. I would say that by default the Gorosei know of it at least and yeah. its location. Uh, if it's not and if it's an idea or maybe like, I don't know, a secret formula to make a nuclear bomb, I don't know, whatever, yeah. um, then they don't have to know it. They just have to know that A, it exists and that B, they need to protect it. Yeah. The only people who should be privy, like the minimum that could be privy for the world government to function is the original uh, founders of the world government, not yeah. particularly those that run it now. And all they need to know is that anyone who is on the edge of finding out this information uh, needs to die, undoubtedly, yeah. which is the ruthless, explains the ruthlessness on Ohara. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, going back to Ohara as well, one one key bit of information that, I mean, I didn't I didn't really think about until until I went back and read up was that when when the Gorose give the orders to kill Clover and to kill the other scholars in O'Hara, um, Clover's talking about the ancient kingdom, um, uh, this this lost kingdom that that's just sort of disappeared over time, and he says something about the name of the kingdom being an important link 
to to the secrets that the government are hiding, and that's that's where that's where the problems arise. So, I mean, it's possible that this object or this idea that they're protecting, either if it's an object, it's in that kingdom, or if if it's an idea, it's from from the people of this kingdom. Something, something like that. Um, the name itself has to hold weight because there's no way Odo would, you know, kill the guy as he's on the verge of saying the name of the kingdom is Bang You Dead. So there's a lot of suspense, obviously, and when we're watching that, we're thinking, oh, come on, you could have just said it. And it was yeah. intentional and it was, you know, good storytelling because we're all very mm -hmm. curious to know what the name is. I just hope that yeah. it does have some weight, that the name itself gives something away or holds some particular power. If the secret itself is a name, I'll be super disappointed. Unless mm. there is something a, a lot bigger behind that name. Yeah. Because um, yeah. it's just like, yeah, the name was Steve and, uh, you know, we've all got to hide mm. from Steve because yeah. it's going to come to you. He's going to come and get you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I'm hoping that it does, it, it, if it's a mm. name, it represents something bigger, but the name itself has to hold some massive weight to order a shutdown of Clover as he's talking and also the extermination of all of his colleagues and eventually, you know, fellow villagers. Yeah. So. That's about it. Yeah. The name. Yeah. Um, another character who seems to know know something that the world government wants to protect is Doflamingo. Yep. Um, you know he's he's like one of the most dangerous pirates out there, but and because of his noble descent and his supposed knowledge of um, a national treasure hidden in Marijoa, the government can't touch him. Uh, how like how do you think he would have come about this information? Do you think it's something that like all the nobles know about, or do you think it's something that that he kind of happened upon by accident? Yep. Uh, we talked about this in depth actually, and I really liked the, the ideas that were floating around. Um, I don't think that it's common knowledge among the world nobles, just because from what we've seen of them, they're so stupid. They're, it is easy for any rogue, like. Their protection doesn't seem that big. All they do is carry guns and rocket launchers around. There's no, you know, strong devil fruit users who protect them. Most of their influence is, um, you know, psychological in the minds of the people. Yeah. So, um, what I'm thinking is, is that Doflamingo, when he was young and still living among the Tenryubito, came upon the secret somehow. Some, yeah. maybe it's just the knowledge of the secret, maybe not. Because obviously, when we're referring to when Law asks him about how do you know about uh, how you control the CP0, what influence can you possibly have as a pirate? Uh, he says, I know of a massive secret hidden within Marijoa, which uh, you know supports the idea that it's a physical object. Um, so, yeah. I think personally, I think he's come across it by accident, by incident in his yeah. childhood years, and he kept that a secret, he kept the secret a secret from his family, from everyone, up until yeah. he needed to use it. Uh, which yeah. was just recently within the manga. That ma that's the one that makes the most sense to me. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like, oh, I'm in this pickle. I'm just going to call in the boys from the, you know, the Marines and tell them I know your secret. You're going to come right now and protect me. Um, and the reason, and I guess a possible argument against that would be that Fujitora was, you know, showing some real sass to him, uh, <laughs> threatening him, etc., telling him, I don't want your system to exist. Uh, and I would just pin that down to Fujitora as just as an individual not really caring about the gravity yeah. of that secret is just following his own sense of justice. Mm. So, yep. Now you've been talking about Fujitora that is, raises an interesting point because if there is knowledge within this current generation of the world government about the secret that they're protecting or the treasure in Marijoa, do you think, how far down do you think that information is filtered? Do you think, like for example, Akainu as the fleet admiral knows do you think Sengoku would know? Do you think the regular admirals know? Um, I don't think the fleet admiral knows because Sengoku got demoted. Mm. Just for that reason. Because if you're going to have a man know the secret, you're going to keep him very close to your hand and you're going to have a massive influence over him. Yeah. Like, you know, externally, maybe a family or something. <laughs> Having something, some leverage against him. So just to toss an old guy out after he's a fleet admiral, to me, says that no fleet admirals don't know, don't know the purpose. Yeah. And I think that makes perfect sense because obviously for like at its base, the less people who know about a secret, the less chance of it getting out. 
Yeah. But the purpose of the Marines themselves is built under the facade of justice and, you know, prom destroying evil, etc., whatever. And I think that if any word got out that the Marines were protecting some kind of secret, that one, it would corrupt the, um, I guess, purity of the Marines in the eyes of the people. Yeah. And it would also, you know, it would give any am enemy of the Marines, it would give them something to attack, especially yeah. now that I've just said enemy of Marines, I'm thinking revolutionaries. Yeah. So, you know, maybe they have something to do. Maybe they know the secret. Maybe they are to get the secret. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about this, and you made you made quite an interesting point. And I mean, it's it's to do with Doflamingo and his knowledge of the secret. And we know we know that Jack's gone back for him um, after after the events of Dress Rosa after he was captured. And we were talking about it and. At the moment, it doesn't seem like he'd be of much use because the smile factory's down. So, it, what he's doing for Kaido, it's not happening anymore. So, yep. he he's as good as dead to him. And you said something really interesting, and that is, if Kaido knows the existence of the secret, he could be getting Doflamingo to come back and tell him. And that would give him massive leverage over the world government. Yeah, I actually think that idea. I mean, I I only stretch it to the point that Kaido kidnapped Doflamingo to know about the secret, mm. but I never actually considered. I think that was your input that that mm. would put Kaido at the very top of the food chain, because now you have this guy who apparently can't die, mm. and he now has sway over the entire government to the extent that it sends their most secret, I guess, secret service to mm. do your bidding. And now that I'm thinking about this, because I was referring to CP0, obviously, now I'm thinking about this, we did see a return of Lucci yeah. earlier, so mm -hmm. maybe they're linked, maybe they're not. I, that idea just yeah. popped into my head now. Mm. Uh, but to think that Kaido can have that much power will just make him so... And it's all, again, I, like I referred, it's all psychological power, and it's all power yeah. that Luffy's crew does not care about. It's all about influence and, you know, mind yeah. games and I will come after X, Y, Z and I will destroy you, blah, 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 blah. Luffy doesn't care about that. And I think when the rest of the world does so much, it will make a Luffy versus Kaido with a Luffy victory seem so much better. Yeah. Just to behold. So I really <laughs> like this um, idea of Doflamingo being Kaido's hostage, revealing the secret. Kaido probably killing him after that because I don't see a yeah. role for him. Uh, Kaido now knows the secret. Luffy takes him out. And government gets more pissed, just constantly, and constantly. Yeah. Mm. yeah um, we talk. We're talking about power here. Um, how much of the One Piece universe do do you think the world government have control over? Like, how strong do you think the Marines are in comparison to, say, say the Yonko? Yeah. Um. I, this is more of a a breadth and depth question. It's like, how much do they control, and how well do they control it? And I think that how much they control is anything they want to. Because obviously they're the largest force in the uh, One Piece world. And the only um, organized resistance is the Revolutionary yeah. Army, which doesn't seem to have much of a high profile around the world. Mm. Um, so they can control anything they want to. And I would wager that a representative of the government has visited every island at least once. Unless, you know, you have something like Raftel, which is super secret. I don't know. Um, and I think that they only control the Marines, at least the, the Marines only exert influence over islands that have the capacity to screw over the government, essentially, because we're thinking back to Alabasta and the Marines did not intervene. They mm. did not care that 2 million people were killing 2 million people and which is yeah. not a low number. Like we're talking a massive mm. full scale revolution. Um, you just had Smoker, who was there, and he was told to get some pirates. So when you're thinking, yeah. oh, well, there's war all around us, but I'm after some pirates, and I'm supposed to be yeah. what is essentially the police force in this universe. Mm. Something's definitely amiss here. Yeah. Um, and I think he pointed that out himself as well. Um, so I don't think their control is, you know, iron grip firm yeah. unless they're scared, unless they're scared mm. of some kind of influence. So yeah, that that's as you know wide and deep as I think it goes. Yeah, um, you talked about uh, two current enemies of the world government. You've got the revolutionaries and you've got pirates. 
and um, another, another um, group that the Gorosei in particular seem to be very wary of are the people who have the will of D, yeah. have that D initial. Um, there was there was a conversation they were having. I I, th I think it was after the events of the Marineford War about the name Porgus D and the fact that that these characters, these Ds, are becoming more more well known in the public, and that's and that for them isn't a good thing. Do you think the Ds in particular have a kind of history um, there? Or? They have to. I think that, that much is obvious. There has to be some correlation. Yeah. I mean, especially when you thought, I think Corazon was the one who said that the people with D are called enemies of the gods, with gods obviously representing uh, the Tenor Yubito and the illusion they've <laughs> created. Um, Will of D actually doesn't fit anywhere into my theory, though I think yeah. it should to some degree. It doesn't. Silly me. Yeah. Um, I think they must have been the opposition of whoever the government represented at the yeah. end, during Void Century. And the formed government must have discovered them somehow, maybe centuries later, maybe decades later, after the events of the Void Century. Um, you know, to their own folly, they realized, we thought these guys were dead, and they're not. Yeah. And they, and you can tell the ratio of Ds to non-Ds is pretty freaking small. So yeah. I'm pretty sure they're, they've kept it, they've, they've kept like breeding pretty close-knit. Mm -hmm. So they haven't built major extended families, and it would it makes sense to do so because you don't want to attract, attract attention and yeah. order some kind of extermination of these. Mm -hmm. So, and again, the reference, like you said, Sengoku, I think he was the one saying, "Oh no, the these are starting to become more famous." Yeah. So I guess there's always that fear of the name, and you know, it would suck if the name that Clover was going to say was, and the name of it is D. Yeah. But, you know, something along mm. the lines could be happening where the Ds yeah. did have a massive impact and mm. they they threaten to, again, have that yeah. same kind of impact in overthrowing the government with figures like Luffy and with figures like Dragon. Mm. And even Blackbeard, if he should choose to continue with this, I guess, war against the revolutionaries yeah. that is on the way to now. So, mm. I mean, it's interesting. I agree with everything you're saying, but Just... then there's the fact that there are people with with um the d in their name that were working for the government so you had you had monkey d garp you had jaguar d soul yeah like i i think that i mean even though they're they're probably not known as like monkey d garp or jaguar d soul to the public that i mean people who know about it um within within the government who know about like the will of d being perhaps a dangerous thing that it's that it's maybe a cover or something, so nobody nobody thinks. All right, okay, the government they're they're specifically against this group of people because of the danger they once posed. Um. Okay. I I agree with you, but I'm pretty sure, like, the most plausible uh, chain of events to me is that once the D starter is over, because obviously the government has taken a lot of steps into hiding any single bit of information about what happened in that century. So I think when the D started resurfacing around. Mm. They were like, oh crap, we haven't finished the job. But yeah. then they decided to be discreet about it. They didn't want to start mm. killing random fam like exterminating entire families. Even yeah. though they've done similar things in the past. But yeah. I don't think that they wanted to create that image as maybe as a younger government. They didn't want to do that kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So they've just decided to censor out D. And they've said, oh, D is just another name. And yeah. the current government has simply decided mm. to hold firm to that. Uh, take on handling the D situation. Yeah. So they've said, all right, we'll just allow Ds to come and go. Um, and you can tell that Ds also have a common characteristic trait of that simplicity that's shared by Luffy and Garp, etc. Um, so maybe they thought, intelligence-wise, they don't seem so much of a threat mm -hmm. to the extent that, you know, if they want to put an allegiance with, with us, with the Marines, we should let them. Maybe okay. mm -hmm. we can use them to our advantage and whatever yeah. hidden strength they possess. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's that's all the points that we that we have down here. So I, I guess we're we're done for done this video. Yes, we well, are. So... I might go home and uh, have an avocado now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Have have some avocado salad there. Yeah, and no, guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you for listening.
Yes, thank you guys. Uh, it, was, it was very off the cuff video this time. Yeah, it was. Uh, and we we put that we put this together. I think I think two days day. ago. Yeah, two day. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Um, check out check out the work that Frankie and Macpachi are doing every week with chapter reviews, and uh, subscribe to our channel because yes, it's Please. it's a good it's a good channel. I promise. It's a good channel, and it will get better. Yeah. It will always it will. get better. Yeah. All right. So I think that's Jawa okay. out. Yep, yeah, man, Marco's gone too. <laughs>